Good morning, good morning, good morning. How are you? Let's get the old next thing going there. Well, truly another day in paradise as we leave Angry Towers. Oh, no, you're coming. We don't want to get in your way. Let's try again. Yes, perfect. I'm going to go the windy way today, give you something to look at, you know, a bit of scenery. Go on, you're turning left, aren't you? Yes. Excellent. Keep going down the trellis. Oh, how are you anyway? All right. It's a lovely day. The jet stream is still way up to the north of Scotland. So we're getting a lovely, warm, Southwesterly, relative, you know, for the time of year, sort of thing. We've just had two weeks of absolute pouring rain, so this is the front has just literally cleared through, so that's why it looks so lovely. Let's get a little bit of air on the windscreen so you can see. I'm sure, you can see. I've cured the uh, squeak in the, uh, I've cured the rattle in the back, but I've still got a squeaky clutch. I've just sort of let I warn you, okay? So, uh, at the moment, we're setting the uh, fees for Denplan, for DPAS. We used to be with Denplan. I, in fact, I was around when Denplan started. Marilyn Orshton and Stephen Nye set up Denplan. And I was uh, one of the first two regional secretaries for Denplan. That was sort of an experiment that they decided not to bother with after a while because they decided that it was better off centralised, you know. They didn't need roving reporters going around trying to sort problems out. It was mainly, uh, you know, people who put insurance claims in. We used to go and have a look and see what the whether it was a valid insurance claim. But, um, you know, I think these days they just, they do it on a, like the old DB, they do it on a statistical basis. You know, if you're putting in an insurance claim every month, they probably will, might have a look at you, but they don't really, uh, bear in mind, don't forget, it's not you that puts the claim in, it's the patient who puts the claim in. Plus they've changed it all over now to a, from a, I don't know, a discretionary fund now so that you know it's like don't you know we'll, we'll never say no so so we're, we, we reserve the power to say no but we'll never say no you know what i mean this whole thing is just silly but they do it for tax reasons same as um mdu and mps there's some advantage to it being discretionary from a from a structural corporate tax something point of view I don't know anyway um, yeah so they write us this letter in November and say if uh, we don't get the fees in by 22nd then uh, they'll assume that we're going to uh, stay the same you know not put our fees up which is certainly which is absolutely not what you would want to happen you know I mean nobody with inflation running between 8 and 10 percent nobody is gonna say we, we want I, want, I don't want my fees put up. Now, <clears throat> they might say that, and I'll come to that later, right? So, what they would be better off doing is saying that if you don't uh, put your fees up, you know, yourself, then we will apply the average raise for your area. So, if you're in the southeast, or say we'll put your fees up, whatever the average fee increase has, has been for the southeast. And that would alleviate a load of work from some dentists who can't be bothered to do the work. You know, they're just like, okay, you are. The average fee increase in my area is seven percent. Then, and you say that you're going to put them up seven percent. If I don't tell you otherwise, then that's great. But they don't. They say that we're we're not going to put them up at all, which is stupid because there there is a dynamic with uh, capitation schemes, third party capitation schemes, not to be confused with government capitation schemes or any other type of cap corporate. Uh, 
the corporate branded, um, you know, like boots, capitation schemes or anything like that. They all work completely differently. If you want to see a capitation system that works, then find one where the dentist sets the fees. If you want to find a capitation system that is never going to work, find one where a third party sets the fees, like the government or boots or whatever. So, you know, some, some sort of loss adjuster, some, some sort of, uh, what's the word, not a loss adjuster, what are they called? The people who uh, mucked up the pensions, people who tell everyone they know what they're talking about when it comes to analysing figures, uh, act, act, actuaries, actuaries, the actuaries are actually always wrong. So, um, yeah, so let's just get that clear, right? We're talking about um, uh, scheme, private sector schemes like Denplan, DPAS, Practice Plan. As far as I know, they're all the same company now. I think they've all been bought by the same company. Um, and the, and the, the service that you get from them is appalling. I mean, really, it's just terrible. It's just barely adequate. You know what I mean? It's just barely adequate to make the system run. They take 10% of your fee. So if you're getting, let's say, uh, I don't know, let's say when we get about, uh, I don't know, £2,000 a month or something, it's not a lot. So say 24000 and they deduct 2400 for administering the scheme, um, which is high. In my opinion, that's too high. And what they've done is they've said that they're going to freeze their um, administration fee at £2.75 per patient per month. And it'll be the third year that they've frozen the fee. I think they froze it this year. And then they're going to... Well, when I say it'll be the third year, it'll be the same. It'll be the second year they've frozen it. Um, and I think they... You know, I think they're wise to do that because I think they are... They do charge too much for what they do. Uh, which, in my case, is nothing. You know, they don't do... For me, they don't do anything. It's all... They, they've got the computer set up to do it all the computers been running for the last 30 years all the software's been paid for etc they don't innovate they don't change the system their reports are rubbish if you try and work out even how many patients you've got on the plan you can't the old nhs schedules were more uh, uh, gave you more information in it in a more useful way you know they uh, they're like oh yeah you've got 96 patients but then you have to take two off for this but well, then you have to add one or take another one off for this, but then, then you can add the two back on that we took off in the first place, you know. And what's the, what's the number you first thought of? So you ne And you never know how many patients you've got on the plan, really. You've got patients who are still members of the plan who haven't paid. Patients who've paid but are not members of the plan. The whole thing is just ridiculous. So I'm trying to reconcile I mean, what we could do is we could just use their schedule and just every time someone comes in. Hello. And every time someone comes in, just uh, just check if the patient's name is on their list. But um, what we do is, because we want the ability to write to all our patients who are on the plan, for example, tell them what the emergency arrangements are over Christmas because that's different for them than it is for everybody else. Um, we like to ha have people marked on our system as being on the plan so that we can do a database uh, query on, uh, on the uh, treatment provision system field. Right, if you don't understand any of this, then don't worry. So, they set their fees on... Uh, <clears throat> annual basis, in other words, calendar year. So they set their fees uh, from January to December. However, the members uh, year it, it don't, doesn't coincide. So for example, my fee year runs from 1st of April to 31st of March. And other um, other uh, dentists have different months. So some renew in March, some renew in February, etc., etc., and I can understand why they do it like that because they don't want everybody renewing in the same month. I suppose they've got so many people now that um, 
and it's probably all centralised and all the practice plan and everybody and the DPAS and DEM plan and everybody all, all go through the same data centre for all I know. But uh, they staggered it. But it does mean that there's a period from uh, 1st of January 2024 that I'm being asked to set fees for that period up until March 31st, 2024. And I don't know what their 2024 fees are going to be. So, and they can't tell me and they don't even know when they're going to know. They've only just, they've only just been told that they're freezing the fees at 275 for 2023. So, they, God knows when they're going to decide what to do with 2024. And yet, they come in with this bloody bombastic letter saying, you know, uh, we, want, we need you to set your fees and if you don't um, uh, set them by November the 22nd, we're going to shaft you real good. Um, then, you know, it's just not the way to do business. And it's not reasonable either. It's not reasonable to give people such short notice to, to do all the calculations behind such a major decision and also not give you the data that you need in terms of their fees. And also really not give you the data that you need in terms of what your average patient discount is, you know. They tell you what discount the patients are getting on the schedule, it's listed, but then they don't tell you what the overall total of the discount, the 5% off if there's two of you on the plan or 10% off if there's three of you on the plan. So when you're charging the fees, you're not going to get those fees because they're going to be reduced by the amount of discount. And short of going through your entire schedule and literally adding up all the discount, you're not going to get that figure. And if you ring them up and say to them, what is my total patient discount per month? either as a figure or as a percentage of my to my income for the month, they don't know, they don't know. They've got all this data and they present it in a way which is like almost obviously the worst way they could possibly present it, you know, the least helpful way they could possibly present it. They give you um, all these different uh, schedules, sub-schedules containing patients that are uh, edge cases and then, uh, and then wonder why you don't know how many patients you've got on the plan and then as far as the financial data is concerned you get one figure which is the total but I don't know whether it's the total before family discount or the total after so don't you cut me up no you see that other bloke cut me up because you didn't this little button up So anyway, I rang them up and as usual, they're very polite and very useless. What are you going to do? So also, I mean, at this point, I need to mention that, you know, inflation is running about 8.7%. RPI inflation, I think, is over 10%. And so and they're asking you to set fees through to April 2024. I mean, I don't even know what inflation is going to be like in April 2023, let alone April 2024. So, fee setting, fee setting once a year, I can understand why, because the patients having had notified of the fees, they do expect them to stay stable, don't they, for a year? They can't be right. I mean, the trouble is every communication with the patient is an opportunity for them to say, sod this, I'm, I'm not going to stay in this scheme anymore. And we found this out with the European Union of Dentists, you know, we were charging them something like £20 a year, which, which dates back to 1990 something. And most of them were German. And, uh, you know, one of the Germans said to me, you know, you, I said, well, we can't, you know, and it was all done through standing orders. So it's not like we could change it like a direct debit. It was done through standing orders. And I said to them, we can't, you know, survive on £20 a member and he said if you write to them and ask them to put their standing orders up he said they'll just you'll just remind them all that they're paying £20 for nothing and they'll all cancel so you're better off having loads of 20 quids than uh, not much of nothing so uh, the deep pass is very sensitive about writing to the patients so for example you can't decide you can't say anything to the patients yourself in the DPAS letter, it's very standard. It just says your uh, payment is going up to X 
from effect from wide date and that's it you can't say that you know this is based on an inflation assumption of 10 percent or whatever now we were quite lucky in that i mean what i did was and what i do as you know i've got a sort of hobby my hobby is if you can call it a hobby um is uh, economics uh, macroeconomics and so i was looking at the money supply and saying like this is the money supplies all those things in the field don't look good. they're obviously doing they're digging trenches aren't they must be looking for a roman settlement prior to building there but um anyone who knows anything about macroeconomics will know that all the governments in the world are in the business of printing money to make everyone rich even though it's all it's done is made everyone poor and um so we anticipated this 10% inflation. And in fact, we actually put our fees up 10% last year. Now, the effect of that was that we lost 8%, 9%, something like that, of our DPAS patients. And, you know, okay, how do I feel about that? Well, I'm, I'm equanimous about it. Uh, equanimous. Uh, it's all the same to me. The... It's balanced so that it doesn't make the slightest bit of difference to me whether patients come in on the plan or whether they come in on the pay-as-you-go. And, you know, and when people say, oh, I don't know whether it's worth me staying on the plan, thinking I'm going to go, oh, yeah, please stay on the plan. We make far more money off you if you're on the plan because you're paying every month and you don't have anything done. I, don't, I never say that because, I, because, first of all, I don't think like that. And secondly, it is not like that. <laughs> as far as I'm concerned... I think we worked out that the, the DPAS patients get 20% of the surgery time and they pay 80, 18% of the surgery turnover. So, um, so assuming that all surgery time on average is equally valuable, we, they are getting a slightly better deal. And that's the key, is to keeping it equitable to everybody. And so I always say, well, look, you know, uh, I mean, I had a bloke in, and he had a lot of crowns done. I mean, literally, he did, did that, did that. He had a lot of crowns done. And um, he was like, well, I don't know whether it's worth me coming in because all i you know, going to need is a scan and polish. To which my reply was, look, normally, I can understand. Go on. Yeah, you're going to go? You're going to go? You're going to go? You're going to go? Yeah. Oh, that was close. So, I said to him, look, honestly, I said, the, the way it's balanced, it doesn't really make any difference to us. I know you think it does, but it doesn't. I'll be happy to see you on the plan, and I will be equally happy to see you on the pay as you go. The only difference is, on the plan, I get a monthly income, but, but I adopt I shoulder the risk that anything might go wrong. On a pay-as-you-go, I don't. You don't pay anything monthly, but you shoulder the risk of the cost should anything go wrong. And, and that you just got to explain it to people very simply. That's all you're doing. You're just taking off the risk off of their shoulders in exchange for a monthly payment to cover the cost of anything that might go wrong. And then after that, if you're a good dentist and nothing goes wrong, then you do well. If you're a bad dentist and tons of things go wrong, then you're going to do badly. You know, that's where the preventive element comes in. But, um, you know, so, but I said, look, I'll tell you one thing, though, because you know, if you came to me today and said, can I join the plan, I would say no. I said, because we don't take on anyone who's got the, the amount of crown work you've got in your mouth. I said, because if anything goes wrong, it's going to cost a fortune. And... Therefore, I wouldn't take you on the plan. So I'm just going to say to you, just a friendly heads up, that you're not the sort of person that we would normally take on the plan. But you're only on the plan because you were on the plan and then you had the crowns done and, uh, and we haven't slung you off the plan, we've kept you on the plan because we like you, you know. <laughs> and he's like, oh, in that case, all right, you know, I'll, I'll stay on. I mean, we're talking about probably, I don't know, 500 quid a year or something. Which, if I could get my car service to 500 year a year, 
plus uh, parts of cost, I would, I'd sign up for that plan straight away. If I could get anything maintained, 500 quid a year. If I could get health insurance at 500 pound a year, I think, uh, plus parts of cost, I would sign up. So I still, I mean, it's an incredible deal, but dentistry is changing. The dentistry has changed. The um, plans, I think, the reason also that the reason that they're freezing, freezing the fees is because the plans have, have changed. Uh, the, the heyday of the plan was the Stephen Knorr, the, the Orchardton days when people were programmed into coming every six months because uh, checkups used to be free on the NHS and so uh, people used to understand the value of getting stuff done early uh, before it became really serious. Um, that's all gone now. The people are in um, uh, not desperation mode, but they're just in a different mode. They're typically, the patient who comes in now will be, will not have been for, I mean, typically, say, since before COVID, so let's March 2020, so let's say probably getting on for three years now, they haven't been in, and then, um, or perhaps even longer, you know, I mean, five or ten years, it's not uncommon. Uh, not unheard of for uh, people. I had someone in who's in their twenties who'd never been to the dentist, as far as I could remember. Um, and what they'll then walk away with a bill for anything between, say, six hundred and two or two and three thousand pounds. This is the bad news part I was telling you about the other day. Um, and, they, and we will then put a lot of work into them in a very short period of time: root treating, extracting, perhaps bridging dentures, getting them dentally fit, and then um, and then um, you know, then I don't know what happens to them. They, they, some of them come back on a regular basis. Some of them want to join the plan. Um, some of them um, will, will just not, you know, will disappear for another five years on the basis that we've they've got no more pain. You know, we've cured their severe pain, so they've got that same. Now these people are not conducive to joining a plan. You know, the plan doesn't cover the cost of the treatment that they need doing. It only is useful going forwards, and going forwards is not the problem that they've got. It's going backwards that they've got the problem. So, I mean, uh, my problem is if I put the fees up 10% again, which I, I'm probably going to, or nine point something, um, then I'm going to probably lose another 10% of the patients, perhaps even 20%, I don't know, perhaps they'll all resign for all I know. You know, there comes a tipping point, doesn't there, where people think I'm not paying, I'm not paying 50 pounds a month into a dental plan. I mean, having said that, you know, they're paying 37 pounds for lunch for three now, or uh, 27 pounds for lunch for two, so fifty pound for all the dentistry you can eat. I it's still, you know, I'm, I'm I'm not I'm not apologetic about the cost. So that's what I'll do, and then we'll probably lose some more. But the question is then, what will those patients do? You know, will they will they find another dentist, or will they, you know, because they'll be embarrassed because they've cancelled the plan, or will they just come in on a pay-as-you-go basis? Who knows? This is suspiciously empty. It's not Sunday, is it? I haven't driven in on Sunday, have I? Am I a bit earlier than normal? Oh, I'm a lot earlier than normal. Yeah. Oh, my God, it's not even half past eight. What am I doing? Some days I don't even leave until this time. Little tip, though. On the plan, when you put your fees up, look, look in, do it on a spreadsheet and look into the what, the what if function, uh, the goal seek. What if goal seek okay because what you can do is you can say if I wanted to put my fees up 10% what would that make the monthly payment and you can ask it to try a bunch of monthly payments to, to arrive at a 10% increase yeah which is difficult to do that I you have to do it by trial and error and that's how the computer does it but it does it very quickly and then the other thing is that if you end up with a monthly subscription like 23 pound 12p put that down to 22.99 it's not going to make that much difference to your income, but it makes a bit of a difference to people when they read it. 
So that's my two little tips for, uh, you know, for fee setting. But don't be embarrassed to put your fees up in line with inflation, you know, really, because, you know, what will happen is if your fees fall behind and you find that you're not, you know, you feel that you're not really getting properly reimbursed for the amount of trouble that the den plan, the capitation patients are causing, then you will, everyone will be unhappy. You'll be unhappy, you'll do crap work, the patients will be unhappy because they're not getting, perhaps you're putting them off, stalling stuff, you're telling them they don't need stuff that they need doing. You know, it's you. You've got to keep. You've got to keep them properly categorised, and you've got to keep them properly charged. Okay, and then the whole system works. But if you don't, then 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 the machine just doesn't work, and it all falls apart. And that's the difference between dentists who know how to make capitation work, and those dentists who who won't get into it because they they just see it being a disaster area. And it, and it can be, but if it's a disaster, it's a disaster area of your own making. Okay, because you're not paying attention to the basic principles. All right, lovely, nice to talk to you. I'll talk to you soon. Bye.